common enemies. All right, the last question about the African Union. Mm -hmm. Has the African Union failed the black diaspora? Mm -hmm. what, are your, what are your thoughts on that? African Union set up with um, Gaddafi money, the building built by the Chinese. It would be a lot to say it failed because it would assume that we ever expected it to do anything for us in the first place. Mm. It's, it's, it's like, oh, the gun shot me, it failed. Right. The gun was built. <laughs> it was manufactured to shoot people. Right. So if you pull the trigger and it fires, then it's doing exactly what it was manufactured mm -hmm. to do. No malfunction there. It's like, oh, the knife cut me. It's broken. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not broken. It's doing what knives do. So the African Union was set up. White Arab on top. He says he's the king of kings. That's what it's about. White Arab on top. Black people on the bottom. You know, Gaddafi was very clear about it. Now, throughout his whole life, he's about pan-Arabism. Mm -hmm. Every single day he's in power is called the Arab Jaramia, whatever this Arab term is. They're always called the Arab Republic of Libya. They have this um, Republic of Arab States. You have um, Libya, Egypt, and Syria. Guess what? Syria isn't in Africa, but guess what? They're all, they're all Arabs, and they know that they're all Arabs. And uh, Nasser is saying that Gaddafi is going to carry on the mantle of pan-Arabism. Mm -hmm. Now, it wasn't until the Arabs start to pull away after Lockerbie and um, this other disco in Germany. I'm forgetting the name of it. But, you know, those got bombed, and now the Arabs are pulling back, mm -hmm. right? So what does Gaddafi do? He says, let me go to the idiots. Right. Let me go to the imbeciles. Let's go to the dummies mm -hmm. who don't know anything about history, mm -hmm. and now I'm going to start talking about pan-Africanism. I'll buy them off. I'll buy their behinds because they're prostitutions, not mm -hmm. politicians, prostitutions, which is a strange mix between prostitute and politician. Mm -hmm. And if I give prostitution. them... Prostitution. Exactly. <laughs> If I give them enough cash, then they will turn around, bend over, and spread it for me. Mm -hmm. And that's exact. So anyone who wants to talk about the say, oh, but he gave us money. Oh, he financed this. He financed that. Prostitutions. Mm -hmm. So your invader, your enemy who's on stolen African land, stolen African territory, if he, give, if he costs up enough cash for mm -hmm. you, guess what? Straight to the bed. And I don't even want to know all the things that go on because... Mm -hmm. uh, Politics makes strange bedfellows. Right. The term. So this is exactly what we're dealing with. African Union bankrolled by these pale white Eurasian Arabs. So you have Western Eurasia, Eastern Eurasia, and none of us, none of them are the friends of black people. Mm -hmm. And as Dr. John Henry Clark said, we have no friends, right? Right. So if we look in the mirror and we don't see a friend there, then it means we really have no friends. The only potential friend we have, so here's the pool of potential friends of all black people. Within that, this is our actual friends in terms mm -hmm, of black right. people. Because the majority of those black people don't want to be black. They want to be proletariat. They want to be whatever. Mark, they want to be class. They want to be gender. They want to be their tribal fragment, to use that term, ethnic group. Mm -hmm. They want to be black American. Right. They want to be Afro-Brazilian. They want to be all these teeny tiny fragments. And then within that, you have people who consider themselves to be black. Then within that, you have those who not only have that identity, but then have allegiance to the black race. And then within that, you have those who have character that they're not going to flip the switch as soon as some money gets thrown into their face. So then you have to deal with, well, what's that African character? What's that black character even in that? So now we're starting off with a very small group, which is fine because all of these uh, non market stories start off with 11 people. Wow. All right, so you start with that and then you build up to eventually we have black people operating as black people on the basis of we're all black people. Modern day Kemet, right? Mm -hmm. Not ancient Kemet. I'm not saying let's all wear these headdresses and then say right. blah, blah, blah. No, I don't mean that. I mean that all of these lands are Kemet. If you look at whatever, if you look at Jamaica, if you look at Haiti, if you look at all of those are modern Kemet. Some, place, some places of the land of black people are under invaders, under foreign control. That means that those are lands that need to be liberated by black people. That's modern Kemet. And guess what? All of us are Kemet you, which just means what? Black people, right? So once we're able to come together on that basis, and that's not what the African Union is about, which is why they let in Morocco and then keep out Haiti, mm -hmm. which was mentioned by name by the people who invented the term Pan-Africanism, but then you got the 1945 uh, Pan-African Congress, which is about let's cut that off. 
and stop talking about black people, and now let's make it anyone who happens to be on the continent continentalism. You got people who are in continentalism who are like, yeah, we're not willing to cede any part of the continent. We're not talking about sub-Saharan. We mean the whole continent. But guess what? If you're talking about the whole continent, that means that you need to go and liberate that land, which is under foreign colonialist occupation by our very first invaders and enemies, those pale white Eurasian Arabs. You got to deal with that, and that's not what they're trying to deal with. They're trying to deal with if we just get a little bit of cash from them then we can all live hunky-dory even though they consider us to be Abid, which is slaves. All right. How does that work for you? Mm, that's sad. Dr. Gabon, how can everybody uh, reach? Okay. I'll tell people how they can get in contact with you. That's okay with you and okay. good job to you and tell anybody, tell everybody your projects you're working on and definitely, definitely. all that good stuff. So, um, more most recent project, repatriate to Ghana.com. Um, and that is exactly what it sounds like, assisting Africans and repatriating. Essentially, so I gave a talk called Divest from America, Invest in Africa to Make Africa Great Again. And the idea about divestment, if some of you were around in the 80s, you remember the whole anti-apartheid movement divesting from South, South Africa. And essentially, this is the same thing that needs to happen for uh, America is divesting. What props up, at the example I give is, let's say that you live with someone who you know is an armed robber and a murderer. Right. But as long as they break you off with a little bit of cash, mm -hmm. that's the hush money you say, okay, well. So he goes out at night with gun, with, with knife, with everything, <laughs> all the tools. And then in the morning, he just gives you like, you know, $20 and you say. So this is usually what the, the way people frame that is, oh, well, we, we worked and we built this against our will, but they leave that part out. Yeah, we built this, so yeah, we should be benefiting from it. This is aiding and abetting a criminal. One of the largest criminal organizations in the history of the planet Earth is the United States of America. So as long as you're there, you're aiding and abetting that enemy as and financing your oppressor who is enslaving you through prison. Because as we all know, the 13th Amendment provides for enslavement after you've been convicted. We know this. So Repatriate to Ghana is essentially to assist people who are interested in divesting from America and then investing in the land of black people, right, which that's not America at this point in time. Uh, another project, abibitumi.com, that one, abibitumi translates to black power. And what abibitumi is doing is creating think tanks all over the, all over the world of people who understand that we're all black people understand that we're all about restoring Ma'at, re-Africanization and de-whitenization. De -whiten, and that's on the individual level, that's on the social level, that's on the cosmic level, right? All of those. Uh, so that's Abibi Bibi Tumi. We do um, we have abibifahudie.com That one's a capoeira site. So a lot of people who consider themselves to be conscious or whatever they're doing karate and taekwondo and all these pale white you're in Muay Thai Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, whatever you name it, they're doing all these white arts. So we have African arts, which are vastly superior to the white arts. And I show this time and time again because I fight people who do all these white arts. You mm -hmm. do Shotokan, fine. You got second degree black belt, third degree. I don't care what belt, mm -hmm. what socks, what shoes, what hat, what accessory, that cannot protect you. Uh -huh. So we show how effective African combat sciences are by using them in the context and with the intent that they were used initially, which is as a war a strategy, as a war. And, and really, I like to deal with it more as a strategy. A lot of people deal with capoeira like it's a game, acrobatics, um, Afro-Brazilian cultural aerobics, all these types of things. But when you go down to the core of it, those Africans were about survival. How do I protect myself? How mm -hmm. am I able to, you know, kill my enemy, essentially? You know, what is what it all boils down to. So we deal with it from that perspective. If you have people who are like, well, I'm doing capoeira and I'm doing it as a sport, that's not how the people who are fighting in wars were dealing with it. Or I'm doing it as a game. I'm doing it as a ritual. So uh, abibifahundie.com is about the re-Africanization and de-whitenization of capoeira. So it goes back to its original intent and you know, practical use. We have abirifahundie.org, which is our school. So we do homeschooling to send our children off. You know, Nana Malcolm X said, uh, also known as Baba Amawale, he said only a fool would send his children to his enemies to mm -hmm. educate them. We agree wholeheartedly. So, you know, we have a homeschool collective. All of us come together and we 
instruct our children together in every single area. Um, we have Sankofa Journey where we bring African people here from the diaspora. If I start listing projects, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got like 30 projects to so just go to. Uh, yeah, where can they contact you directly? In? Yeah, so you can contact me through my personal site as abadelekamban.com, mm -hmm. spelled as it will show up O B A D E L E K A M B O N.com. And my information is me, M E at abadelekamban.com. Mm -hmm. You can hit me up, you know, via email. I'm not on any white social networks. I'm on a BB Tumi, which is our own black owned social network. So if you want to hit me up, you can hit me up there. If you send me a message on anything else, I'm not there one. Mm -hmm. The last uh, thing, what I call the uh, Undercloud Railroad, is the presence that I still have on YouTube. Uh -huh. You send me a message there, I will never respond to it. I'll see it. Uh -huh. I will never, ever respond to you because how come you can, you can contact me on something white, but you can't contact me on something black? That means mm -hmm. you don't need to talk to me. I don't need to talk to you. Go your own merry way. Not everybody is down with me. Cool. Fine. Uh -huh. I'm only going to talk to people who want to contact me through the African thing. Okay. If you can contact me through the African thing, that's where we have common ground. Okay. Let's chit chat. If you say, oh, you're not on Facebook, then how can I... <laughs> Stay right where you are. Mm -hmm. Hopping and clapping for all that insanity that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Mark Zuckerberg stealing your data. He, you could, they could say he's raping your mama. You say, but where can you get better clothes than here? Where can you find, you know, that's not a Malcolm X again. Mm -hmm. This is the best plantation ever. Right. Digital plantation. So we have our Undercloud Railroad. We're trying to bring Africans back. Re-Africanization, de-whitenization for total African liberation. Restoring Ma'at throughout the world and throughout the cosmos and internally for ourselves as black people. Black people first. Habibi Tumi. Habibi Fahmudie. Brother, thank you so much. Dr. Gabon, it was a pleasure, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Till next time, family. Do you have kids back? I've got two kids. Are they back in America? Yeah, they are. Okay. Hi. Wait a minute. Subscribe to the channel. That sounds like my name, right? Yeah, I've got two kids. Two kids. Yeah, because I know everybody I talk to is regret that they should. They, they say they should have left sooner, and they waited too long. It's usually I think the children when you have children. Yeah, it makes it harder. Yeah. 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 And where did you repatriate to? Excuse me. Where did you repatriate to? What's that? Where did you repatriate you to? Southern Africa. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Southern Africa. Not to be confused with South Africa. Not to be confused with South Africa. Okay. <laughs>